What's up beautiful people, today we're bringing Douglas Murray to the channel. We're going to be checking out Douglas Murray dismantles Israeli genocide claims and exposes hypocrisy. Let's get to it. It's going to be an interesting one and also very controversial. So I urge you to keep an open mind or click away. Douglas Murray has emerged as one of the most articulate voices of reason in talking about the Israel-Hamas war and I wanted to read you an article he wrote about this accusation of genocide, the, the appalling perverse accusation that Israel has faced by some and he so perfectly describes the issue. So let me read to you what he wrote. Like a number of anti-colonialists, William Dalrymple lives in colonial splendour on the outskirts of Delhi. The writer often opens the doors of his estate to slavering architectural magazines. A few years ago, one described his pool, pool house, vast family rooms, animals, cockatoo, and the usual entourage of servants that attends any successful man in India's capital city. I only mention Dalrymple because he is one of a large number of people who have lost their senses by going rampaging online about the alleged genocide in Gaza. He recently tweeted at a young Jewish woman who said she was afraid to travel in London during the Palestinian protests. Forget 30,000 dead in Gaza, he said, tens of thousands more in prison without charge, 5 million in stateless serfdom, forget 75 years of torture, rape, dispossession, humiliation and occupation, it's all about you. It is one thing when a street rabble loses their minds, but when people who had minds start to lose them, that is another thing altogether. I find it curious. By every measure, what is happening in Gaza is not genocide. More than that, it's not even regionally remarkable. Hamas's own figures, not to be relied upon, suggest that around 28,000 people have been killed in Gaza since October. Most of the international media likes to claim these people are all innocent civilians. In fact, many of the dead will have been killed by the quarter or so Hamas and Islamic Jihad rockets that fall short and land inside Gaza. Then there are more than 9,000 Hamas terrorists. So, some of the rockets or people die because of the rockets from Hamas, not from Israel. Let's not rush over it. Dead will have been killed by the quarter or so Hamas and Islamic Jihad rockets that fall short and land inside Gaza. Okay. Then there are more than 9,000 Hamas terrorists who have been killed by the IDF. As Lord Roberts of Belgravia recently pointed out, that means there is fewer than a 2 to 1 ratio of civilians to terrorists killed. Quote, an astonishingly low ratio for modern urban warfare, where the terrorists routinely use civilians as human shields. Most Western armies would dream of such a low civilian casualty count. But because Israel is involved, Jews are news, the libelous hyperbole is everywhere. For almost 20 years since Israel withdrew from Gaza, we've heard the same allegations. Wait, it so let's break down what he just said. He said the people that die in Gaza, some of them are due to the rockets from Hamas. And the other 9,000 are from uh, people, the Hamas, Hamas terrorist group. That's what I'm, you know, getting the information I'm getting from him. So he's saying few civilians or not a lot of civilians, which is kind of contradictory a little bit because what is a lot? Even one is too many. But I think he's comparing it with the, I think he said the Muslim warfare where they use civilians as a, as a shield. Yeah, this I, I don't like to talk about this or bring videos with regards to this because it's so there's a lot of stories. I don't know what is true and what is false. And the pictures and the images I see on the internet has been so, um, so terrifying. So I just try to stay away from it as much as possible. But you know, in the world we live in, you don't really know where to get good information, so you have to start doing research for yourself. And that's why I'm watching this video with you. You know, I'm gonna go read after now and just try to you know really see what might be happening. Israel has been accused of committing genocide in Gaza during exchanges with Hamas in 2009, 2012 and 2014. As a claim, it is demonstrably, obviously false. When Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005, the population of the Strip was around 1.3 million. Today it is more than 2 million, with a male life expectancy higher than in parts of Scotland. How ironic, given the Scottish National Party constantly uh, calling for ceasefire in Gaza. Perhaps they should worry about their own issues. <laughs> Maybe Israel should uh, pass, a the Israeli parliament should pass a resolution against Scotland. <laughs> During the same period, the Palestinian population in the West Bank grew by a million. Either the Israelis weren't committing genocide, or they tried to commit genocide but are uniquely bad at it. Which is it? 
Well, when it comes to Israel, it seems people don't have to choose. Everything and anything can be true at once. Here is so it's said while they're accusing Israel of genocide, that there's population growth in Palestine, from 1.2 million to 2 million. Well, when it comes to Israel, it seems people don't have to choose. Everything and anything can be true at once. Here is a figure I've never seen anyone raise. It's an ugly little bit of maths, but stay with me. If you wish, you might add together all the people killed in every conflict involving Israel since its foundation. In 1948, after the UN announced the state, all of Israel's Arab neighbours invaded to try to wipe it out. They failed, but the upper estimate of the casualties on all sides came to some 20,000 people. The upper estimates of the wars of 1967 and 73, when Israel's neighbours once again attempted to annihilate it, are very similar, some 20,000 and 15,000 respectively. Subsequent wars in Lebanon and Gaza add several thousands more to that figure. It means that up to the present war some 60,000 people have died on every side in all wars involving Israel. Over the past decade of civil war in Syria, Bashar al-Assad has managed to kill more than 10 times that number. Although precise figures are hard to come by, Assad is reckoned to have murdered some 600,000 Arab Muslims in his country, meaning that every week to meaning that every 6 to 12 months he manages to kill the same number as died in every war ever involving Israel. Mm. There are lots of reasons you might give to explain this. That people don't care when Muslims kill Muslims. That people don't care when Arabs kill Arabs. That they only care if Israel is involved. Allow me to give another example that is suggestive. No one knows how many people have been killed in the war in Yemen in recent years. From 2015 to 2021, the UN estimated perhaps 377,000, ten times the highest estimate of the recent death toll in Gaza. The only time I've heard people scream on British streets about Yemen has been after- But all of this, when you're making this the standard, does it, is it to justify anything going on in Gaza? Because the way I see it is, one life is, is too much, nobody should be dying anyways. I do understand where Douglas might be coming from by this comparison, just to show that it's not a lot happening in Gaza. But also, it is flawed comparing deaths to another death happening somewhere. I mean, that's what I think. I'm not on the side of anybody, I'm just trying to understand the context, you know? That's why I brought the video. But I just think people shouldn't be dying in any context. After the Houthis started attacking British and American ships in the Red Sea, and the deadbeat idiots on the streets of London start, started chanting, Yemen, Yemen, make us proud, turn another ship around. Because like all leftists and Islamists, there is no terrorist group these people can't get a pass on, so long as that terrorist group is against us. I often wonder why this obsession arises when the war involves Israel. Why don't people trawl along our streets and scream by their thousands about Syria, Yemen, China's Uyghurs, or a hundred other terrible things? There are only two possible conclusions. The first is a journalistic one. Ever since Mary Colvin was killed, it became plain that Western journalists were a target in Syria. Not eager to be that target, most journalists hot-footed it out of the country. Some who didn't fell into the hands of ISIS. Israel-Gaza wars, by contrast, do not have the same dynamic, and on a technical level, the media can applaud itself for reporting from a war zone where they are not the target. But... I suspect it is a moral explanation, which explains the situation so many people find themselves in. They simply enjoy being able to accuse the world's only Jewish state of genocide and Nazi-like behaviour. They enjoy the opportunity to wound Jews as deeply as possible. Many find it satisfies the intense fury they feel when Israel is winning. Like being fanned on your veranda while lambasting the evils of empire, it is a paradox to be sure, but it is also a perversity. And it doesn't come from nowhere. I think Douglas is completely right that it's a moral issue. That Israel mm. touches on people's moral nerves and sensitivities. Some people, especially in Europe, who may have some sense of guilt about what happened in the Holocaust in Europe, by saying that Israel's now the Nazis, they can uh, cleanse themselves of their feeling of guilt and put it back onto Israel. The Jews have always faced these accusations. Of I said it's a moral issue. Being a source of immorality. But what really is going on is that people who attack Israel, that they themselves are grappling with their own issues, with their own conscience, which the Jewish people in Israel represent the voice of God in, in the world. And hostility to the Jewish people is a hostility to that eternal call to Sinai, as Herman Rauschening put it. Rauschening I saw a video um, from Ma Ima Ma Marie Emanuel. He said a strike on Israel is the start of World War Three. That was his... Yeah, I think that was word for word what he said. 
I was going to say I'm paraphrasing, but I think that's word for word what he said. He said a strike on Israel is the start of World War Three. Mm-hmm. Worked with the Nazis and then eventually changed and sided with the Allies. But that's what he said it comes down to ultimately. It's uh, people who they themselves are grappling with their own uh, morality or lack of. And by accusing the Jews, they can uh, dampen their own moral conscience that screens within them. Mm-hmm. And so Douglas has shown that the accusations are based on lies. And he has concluded by touching on what Judaism tells us is the ultimate cause of the hate, which is, as the rabbi said in the Talmud thousands of years ago, the sina, the hatred, sina in Hebrew is hatred, of uh, the nations. Well, okay, I think we can end the video right there. That was a pretty interesting one. I'll put the link to his channel in the description so you can go check out you know, other thoughts he might have. But I feel like that's a very new view to me. You know, I've tried to like read about this, but usually the information that gets to me, I was going to say gets to us, but gets to me particularly is usually one with trauma. So it's hard to read about it without, you know, seeing the level of devastation, you know, at least perceiving that in the context. So I, I didn't really know about this perspective, but it's a new perspective to have. I don't know if it's true yet. I don't know about the um, how factual it might be, but I, I feel like it's good to have this at the back of your mind. So when you see information on the other side, you can now compare and contrast and that way you can find loopholes. So yeah, I do appreciate knowledge like this, you know, regardless of where you stand. I just think it's a perspective to have. So I do appreciate him for sharing. Anyway, share your thoughts, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a wonderful day. Peace.